Bro, your tricep looks huge. How is it? Yeah, this is good. What's up guys? Today we're gonna dive into an uncomfortable topic for most binge eating. Now, this is something that affects all of us, whether we recognize it or not. Uh, so a lot of people, when they think of it, there's the clinical term, and then there's kind of the more abstract, open-ended, like kind of common day term. But they kind of coincide, but it's really tough. Like a technical binge eater is someone who's very mentally scarred, and they actually really just do need help. I'd really recommend going to a therapist or something like that if you're very, on the high end of the seriousness of the spectrum. But for the rest of us, dieting is hard. Your body's starving itself. Naturally, it's gonna have a call for more food. And sometimes you just go crazy. We're gonna explore why that is, how to deal with it, and like kind of the different scales that correlate with this. Okay, binge eating defined once again further to have the clinical definition and to be diagnosed as a binge eater, you have to have two binges a week for a period more than six months. For some reason, for a lot of these like clinical psychological issues of like definition, it's really weird. They have to be over a certain time. Same with depression and some other ones. It's very odd, but that's the case. So to dive deeper into why this problem does occur, one fourth of Canadians are actually obese and because of that there's a big epidemic and there's a big market for dieting and weight loss. So it's not so much that people have an obesity and overweight epidemic, it's that we have a dieting epidemic. Studies show that majority of people that try to diet will actually gain it right back and binging is a huge causal factor for this. So like I said, Usually you'll notice people go really hard, they'll jump into some unrealistic grapefruit juice all day for a week, they'll do so well, they'll drop 10 pounds, and then life kicks back in, they eat a ton of food, they can't stop themselves, their body keeps going, going, wanting more, and they gain that 10 pounds right back. There's such a thing as body set point. This is another scientific term where they believe that your body's kind of made to lie, and your body will try to regulate itself to that degree of point, whether you're, usually when you're under, when you're over, it's shown that we can blow past that, but if you consider Western diet, it's kind of obvious why this is so. The term for why we're saying this is hedonistic deprivation. So this is, you figure you've done something good, it's you've been dieting, you've been putting in work, you can justify overeating a little bit, you lose control, binge. That's kind of the scale of how it develops. In a relatively new peer-reviewed study, this has been backed up scientifically. The study is called Dieting and Binging, a Causal Analysis, and it showed that 50% of diet patients actually did commonly engage with binging, like with throughout the week, not just once, this was often. And this is a huge statistic to consider because if it's something that comes with dieting, how do we combat it? How do we come over it? And what level is too much where you actually do need help or you should cut the diet? The American Psychological Association defined binge eating as eating a ton of food in a small time frame while exercising a loss of control or constraint. So it's just where you can't physically stop yourself from eating. However, a lot of other definitions very importantly mentioned a secrecy component. It really tend, they've tend to found that within studies there's a huge secrecy kind of to this thing. People are very ashamed of it. They'll tend to when they're by themselves, they'll start in the morning, they'll do really well throughout the day, they get home alone, and they'll just stuff their face like crazy in their private quarters. And that's why this really commonly correlates with bulimia and nervosia. And that's something to watch out if you're coming going down that path. It's important you talk to people. Past that, they found that this is most common with females, so especially pregnant with females. Females reported that after a binge, they'd be more likely to exercise activities like throwing up, overcompensating the next day, and even things as little as feeling more ashamed and not wanting to talk about the binge and being scared to acknowledge it to themselves and others. Whereas with males, uh, they found a very different component that was quite interesting. Males tend to be more open about the binge. They discuss it with others. They'd be like, oh, I messed up, I ate a ton of food but they felt that they needed it and they felt sad, they reported to feel more satisfied at the end where the females did not. And there's an argument that it could be more of a physiology standpoint where men kind of feel they needed this and they're okay with it. And you also have to consider the regulating mechanisms and sizes of men and female. So male binges tend to be a lot more and men, men like, from the evolutionary standpoint, we tend to crave more fattier and protein dense food. So that's why we'll usually reach for burgers and things. Where women, it tends to be carbs for whatever reason that is internally, biologically. And that's why you'll usually see women grabbing the sweets more. Men will go out, have a ton of pizza, or, or even overeating with their friends can be another symptom. So there's such a wide array of definitions, but it's important to acknowledge that it has several different faces. So I just wanted to go over a couple other disorders that are actually related to binge eating. One of them is 
bulimia nervosa and the second is anorexia nervosa. Now keep in mind guys, a lot of these studies are actually found mostly in women. And another, and another thing is in college, it's very high risk for a lot of people to actually develop these type of eating disorders. All right, so now that we know what it is, why it happens and the scales of it happening, it happens to everyone, so don't feel too worried if you have binged, quote unquote, in the past. And know there are different levels of binging. I will never understand someone with orexia's binge, because that is just something so scary and really sad psychologically. Something I'll never comprehend, but for myself, sometimes in the past, like I'd be dieting and I'm just like, shoot, and you just, you're like, what have I done? It comes to that point. So, Commonly when it does happen, there's triggers, and there's female and male specific tri triggers that can also overlap. We're gonna identify them all for you, so you can start to ask yourself questions and think proactively before something like binging can occur. All right, the triggers for female were stress, negative emotional states, being alone, and boredom. However, most importantly out of these four was being alone. This was really, really crucial to the binge eating. It goes hand in hand with the secrecy component that is evident with the BED. Reslin and Salt's 2011 study supports this and this really changed the context that includes secrecy as a component of the definition. So for female, this is a huge thing. It tended to be when they were alone, they were bored, having a multitude of these factors, and just when they had that ability to do so in their own and they just kind of, it would happen and then you wake up and you're like, what did I just do? How did people eat the girls eating like 6,000 calories in one sitting? Like, especially dieting, it just triggers it. And we're gonna find out the hormonal reasons why right after Kyle tells you the male triggers. Just to clarify, when it comes to binge eating, for women, a lot of it is emotional, and for men, it's actually physiological. So just an example for men, let's say I'm out playing hockey, I burn an extra 500 calories, and I tell myself, okay, I'm gonna have two slices of pizza, one main thing you need to keep in mind is this is nice and controlled, but the binge is when I take those two slices and I finish an entire box. So a lot of men kind of try to justify binge eating with exercise. Um, and then number two is substance abuse. So a lot of you guys can probably relate to this. You go out, you go out drinking with your buddies and you just kind of lose absolute control, whether it's alcohol, whether it's weed, and then you kind of go on an entire binge three, four, 5,000 calories later, you've eaten a ton of food. So the easiest way to explain why this happens is basically just because you're not rational in any of these situations. As promised, we explored the social components of binge eating, but now let's look at the biological, the actual reasons and hormones that make you do this. So the main two things here are dopamine and serotonin. Serotonin plays a role in the hypothalamus and its ability to regulate food satiety. So that's how full you feel with the food you do eat. And when you're dieting, this gets all out of whack and it will push it up and you're not gonna feel full even if you hit your macros and you should be full. That's why people will blow past their maintenance calorie when they do binge, because they have some really dysregulated system kind of pushing you to eat your food back, try to gain your weight so that your body doesn't think it's killing itself anymore. That's why drugs like serotonin can actually be given and prescribed to prevent hunger. This is really dangerous and should not be recommended, but you can manipulate it to work in your favor. This is something I really do not recommend doing and this is just sketchy. Messing with your biological, psychological components of your body is always a weird thing. Try to keep it more natural, modern medicine's good, but if you're doing anything really funky, stay away. So dopamine, dopamine signaling is kind of like your body's ability to feel like joy and satisfied with the food. Not satiety wise, but it's just kind of like the rush and the improvement from your brain for what you've eaten. So this tends to be most common with palatable foods and your body will really demand this in a cut. You'll notice when you're cutting, you start craving things you didn't even care for before. Like for me, I started really wanting donuts. I hated donuts six months ago and this cut, like I don't know why, I ended up just loving donuts because your body wants that palatable food because it knows it's gonna get the job done fastest. If I have a ton of donuts and a hamburger, so these really sugary and fatty foods, my body's gonna fill up, gain weight a lot faster than if I go running out eating a ton of vegetables. That's why unfortunately it's easier to crave foods you shouldn't have because your body's trying to have this regulatory ability. Now there can be issues with dopamine signaling and this is commonly associated with the diet and that's why you'll see more binging with the diet but let's explore those factors. Genetics, dietary restraint, stress, and body dissatisfaction are the four main issues towards dopamine signaling. So going back to our earlier point, a lot of it is believed that this is a big cognitive issue and that's kind of the underlying factor. So maybe if the issue is within the cognitive, the stress, these external factors, maybe the solution is there too. There are some harsher kind of quote unquote clinical solutions to binge eating. Once again, I wanna recommend, if you're finding that you're really struggling and you're really messed up with this, keep in mind like, 
I think a lot of us could kind of go to that issue of overeating twice a week without control definition when you're really in a deficit, like it's really tough. Um, especially your newer competitors, they have a lot of trouble with this. But that doesn't mean you should just right away go, frig, I'm done, that's it. Time for therapy, I'm quitting, I'm never dieting again, throw in the towel like. Hey listen, I quit. No, everyone does have this issue. Like, if you're really messed up, I'd say as if you have that bulimia issue, anorexia, if you're overcompensating, doing a ton of cardio for everything you mess up, if you just constantly go, why can't I find control in my life, then you should really speak to someone, get help, even talking to friends about it and trying to recognize the solution. So if the issue is cognitive, can we find cognitive solutions? Me and Kyle throughout the time of dieting have found a lot of things to really help. We're not going to go into the medical things. If you actually have that, just speak to your doctor. I'm not a doctor. We're going to kind of give you the more bro -y solutions we had to avoid binge eating and kind of just overcome it. My number one tip for you guys is to blog the day in advance. This is something I will tell absolutely everyone. So for me, like I do enjoy sweets, I like ice cream, so if I know I'm going to my buddy's birthday party or if I know I'm going out to lunch with Josh or anything like that, I will log it the day in advance. Um, and it may not be like a broccoli, chicken, rice type meal, but it will fit my macros and that way I know exactly what I'm gonna be having. Another thing is I like to really plan um, the, day, the day ahead. And what I mean by this is it's not the same thing, but I like to leave about 200, maybe 300 calories for the very end of the day for something like carrots, for something like celery, um, or any like veggie type thing. Because when you're in a deficit, as much as you crave sweets um, and sugary type things, like food satiety, in my opinion at least, like food satiety is up here and sweets are down here. Like I would much rather like a huge plate of veggies or something like oatmeal that just really makes me full over like a donut that's gonna be eaten in two seconds. So really allow yourself like a certain amount of calories. I wouldn't recommend a thousand because a lot of times you'll kind of go off and and not become controlled within that sense at the end of the day. Um, but just a couple hundred for like a veggie type thing. Another absolutely huge thing is do not keep your binge foods in your house. This is something a lot of people struggle with. So if you absolutely know you're gonna binge on ice cream, please do not keep it inside your house because that's more than likely what's gonna happen. On top of that, I absolutely do preach flexible dieting to everyone, but when you are in a diet, please um, keep in mind that volume is everything. So for many people, I, like, I would highly recommend having like a nice, full, voluminous, nutritious, plate of food for lunch that's like 500 calories compared to like one Big Mac because that Big Mac may trigger signals in your mind that's gonna crave you, I mean that's gonna leave you craving more, you're gonna probably want that second one and then you're gonna want that McFlurry, whereas like that nice like full voluminous food um, plate of food is really gonna leave you like nice and satisfied. So volume over everything within a diet. This is honestly probably my biggest tip of all. Um, I highly recommend you guys maybe like writing out on a piece of paper and putting it anywhere, whether it's in a cupboard, whether it's in your backpack, on your computer. Um, just a bunch of questions that you can ask yourself that will really try to trigger the thoughts inside your mind, like what's going on when you feel like binging and also like um, write down a few things that's gonna really help you avoid it. So for me, when I was getting ready for my physique show or if I'm just in a cut, um, I'd write down a few questions such as, um, like kind of like what's going on, like what am I, why am I craving the food that I'm craving? Um, but on top of that, like the main question I would ask is, if I eat this food, do I realize that it's gonna throw me further off my goals? Um, so something like this is gonna really stop me from binging. So I may have that slice of pizza because I'm like, I need it so bad, but I really deep down understand that it's gonna throw me off, but it'll help me control myself so that I don't have that one slice and then crave seven more. So it'll kind of leave me at a point where I did get thrown off my goals, maybe 200 calories, but I can still be controlled and not be thrown too far off. Lastly, if you are gonna diet and you're gonna do a real serious diet, especially if you're prepping or you're just gonna get really lean, I'd really recommend coach or someone with oversight who actually knows what they're doing to diet you properly and a good coach at that. That's something we pride ourselves in as coaches is this mental like health above all, above everything else, above results. Like you gotta do it properly. So case in point, if I drop a client's macro of 700 calories, he's gonna lose some serious weight. I'm gonna look like the greatest coach ever. Everything's gonna be so good until he binges out, eats so much, gains a ton of weight back and we just run in circles. That's why it's better to be in a small deficit. If I put you in a deficit of 200 calories a week and you're hitting that rigidly and consistently, although it may technically only be a 1400 calorie deficit from your maintenance, there's other factors to consider because this consistency and things like intermittent uh, 
caloric restriction. This is kind of the, what we try to practice. So every fourth day you get a big refeed essentially and this kind of helps with the psychological health. So you need to, need to, need to, need to have, it's so important, good oversight from an educated coach, friend, whoever it be, we're not even tuning our own horn here. There's tons of great coaches out there. But if you're looking to do coaching, you can always apply over full right now, but in the future, if that's ever something you're considering, it's very important to have someone there to help you and to help you avoid binging. Because if you do it wrong, you can screw yourself up and get stuck in a very, very dark trap. And the sad thing is when you lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight, you're gonna end up putting on a lot of visceral fat. And that's very dangerous, it can be very detrimental to your physique. Thank you so much for staying to this point. Uh, it's really good. If you want, feel free to recommend this to a friend. Uh, clients, whoever, whoever you think really needs it. Uh, if you're having issues, make sure you speak to your doctor. You can always talk to us, we try to do our best. Like that's what we're here for. Thanks for checking in. It was a bit more of a serious video. We wanted to make it more comical and enjoyable that sense, but we figured it was really, did a lot of research on this. This took me forever. I'm really proud of this video because I know it's something we all need and something that affects all of us. And to understand something is how to eventually become able to overcome it and that's really important is to contextualize and know why something is happening you go oh I see maybe I can cut out this or the tips that Kyle just told you will make a world of difference so thank you so much please subscribe if you haven't already check out those macro hack videos Kyle talked about it's been a good time we'll see you in the next video peace